That boy Snoop said, I don't care who the offensive coordinator is, buddy. If I'm QB1, I'm bringing it. Y'all seen him in the Pro Bowl? I know y'all seen Snoop in that Pro Bowl showing out. That boy said, I'm ready. Stay ready so I ain't got to get ready. Shout out to Snoop, by the way. But anyway, <laughs> YouTube, team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And happy Friday, baby. Hope everything is going good. This was a lovely Friday. We starting off great. Um, I love y'all. Thank you for everything that y'all do. For real. I got to tell y'all all the time, man. Y'all are very, very much appreciated for everything that y'all do on a consistent basis. Always supporting. Always showing love. So, these Baltimore Ravens. These busy Baltimore Ravens. Very, very busy. They've been interviewing this guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy. But when you are the company that's hiring... You could let everybody know, hey, we got an open position, we're hiring, and you could interview a lot of people for one time, but it becomes more real to both you and them if you bring them back for a second interview. That shows that there's some genuine interest that's really building up. That shows that you really like what they had to say initially, and you want to hear more. And this is exactly what's happening with the Baltimore Ravens and Todd Monken from georgia the two time back to back national champions anyway let's just read the report from mike garofolo because i always thought it was garofolo and i know i'm gonna mess his name up in the future but it's garofolo anyway he said the ravens are interviewing georgia offensive coordinator slash qb coach todd monken a second time today second time uh, sources say Monken is one of a handful of OC candidates to get a second interview in Baltimore. He's also interviewed with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So and that would be sort of a uh, reunion for him since he was there before. Um, so, yeah, Ravens, apparently they, they, they liking what they seeing. Um, is this genuine interest? Well, it, it, it is. It is you, because, you know, you don't want to waste, especially if you're the Baltimore Ravens right now. You, you don't want to waste your time. Uh, but you certainly don't want to waste somebody else's. You don't want to waste somebody else's because you have a role on your team that is very, very important. Um, this next move at offensive coordinator, it could dictate a lot with what happens to your franchise, what happens with your franchise quarterback even. It has such a big impact on several different areas uh, of your team and, and your overall team success. Um, so... You want to make sure you really, this next hire, you knock it out the park. So second interviews, third interviews, fourth interviews if need be, but you can't waste your time or anybody else's. Um, so we'll see what comes of that. And again, they've been busy earlier this week. Um, whoa, wow. Literally, literally, when I was about to talk about them, Ian Rappaport just literally put out just now at 10.08 a.m. It's 10.08 right now. Uh, he just put out Seahawks QB coach Dave Canales is slated for a second interview with the Ravens for their vacant offensive coordinator job on Monday, sources said. So, Munkin, Friday, second interview, bam, Canales, Monday, second interview, bam. I had to make sure I didn't say Friday and Monday and mix them up. Anyway, he's getting a second interview. Uh, and it says Canales, who impressed with his work with Geno Smith this year, Joins Todd Monken and others as finalists. Finalists. And I guess the Ravens were like, Canales, we saw what you did with Geno Stone. Bring it here, baby! Bring it here! Because Geno Stone, I mean, he... I'm, I'm tripping. Geno Smith, my apologies. Too much Ravens up in here. Too much Ravens. Get, get them out. Geno Smith. Ravens saw what the Seahawks did with Geno Smith, and they said, oh, we like it! We like it! Bring it over here. Um, and he ended up, well, he didn't get it officially. I mean, is he in the rankings for it? I'm not sure. But uh, he is a possible comeback player of the year. A possible comeback player of the year. Um, but um, I know the Ravens are hoping that Lamar Jackson comes back and plays for them uh, next year. So if, if, if he ends up being the offensive coordinator, okay. Because they like, hey, look, look at the turnaround that they did with Geno Smith. Um, cause I, I didn't see it coming. I tell you that much. I, I did not see this happening, but then something that we always got to think about when we see these QB coaches, offensive coordinators for all these different teams and we love them and we like them and we interested in them and all that. We see what happened with Geno Smith specifically, but you also got to remember baby DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett. 
Weapons matter. They certainly do. So, an off a great offensive coordinator is the start. It's not the finish, but it is a huge start. So getting the right guy, heading in the right direction is very, very important. Now, um, a couple of days ago, uh, Jeremy Fowler, he had tweeted out that another name in the Ravens offensive coordinator search was Bills wide receiver coach Chad Hall. And he apparently interviewed with the team on Wednesday so Bills wide receiver coach, we know uh, how the Bills been doing with them wide receivers, how productive they've been. Um, and, and he mentioned Stephon Diggs has posted three sh straight 100 catch seasons with Hall as his coach. Mm. Wow. Uh, ooh, what would that be like? I mean, we had it a couple years ago under Greg Roman with Hollywood. He had over 100 catches, I believe. Um, thousand yards, too. Um, what would that be like? A 100 catch receiver with over a thousand yards. That'd be weird. Uh, again, a lot would be philosophy based, so it, stuff could change. Um, but yes, yeah, again, it's nice that the Ravens are really exploring all options because that's what you want to do. You you do not want to be narrow minded or closed minded and be like, all right, this is the kind of guy that we want. Even though they could be thinking that, you want to try to go for something new. In my opinion, uh, because what you've had, it was cool. Um, for a couple years, it was good, but then. It, it peaked way too early. <laughs> it, it peaked. Uh, and it just, it didn't last. It didn't last. Um, and we did actually see, like, early on, we saw, and, and no offensive coordinator is perfect. No coach, period, is perfect. They all got their flaws. But with Greg Roman under that offense, we did actually see the flaws early, even when stuff really seemed to be going great. It's just that. So much other stuff was just so great early on that we were chilling like, oh, yeah, yeah a little flaw here, flaw there. Oh, it's, okay. it's okay. It's cool. All the other stuff was just so great that it seemed to overcome that flaw. Uh, but when it mattered most, we saw the result. Uh, and then some of it wasn't even like on Greg Roman early on. 2019, um, that playoff game, oof, bleh, yuck. The drops, <laughs> the drops turned to picks. Uh, the turnovers, uh, the poor decisions on fourth downs, uh, the bad scrambles, um, the, the the poor decision making on some of them scrambles, the um, yeah, just uh, the drops are the thing that just hurt. I think the most, man. It was drop after 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 drop but anyway, um, I, I'm sorry. We, I'm sorry I had to go down memory lane with that. It just, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Ravens keep keep casting that net out far and wide, um, and you need to come back with a really good catch because this is crucial. Anyway, team keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. Just thank you, thank you. If ain't nobody tell you that today, thank you, thank you, man. Thank y'all for being positive. Thank you for showing love to each other. Thank you. For real, man. So on that note, <clears throat> we out.